Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, Unit 2.4, Fiscal Policy, the first policy that the government might use to manage the economy. By the way, I'm filling in for Mr. McLaughlin. I'm his shorter-haired um, alter ego. Um, with fiscal policy, basically the idea is that we want to uh, do just what it says there. The government is going to manage the economy simply by using a deficit budget or a surplus budget, uh, depending on whether it's a recession or whether uh, they're trying to control inflation. And we can easily uh, diagram that with just a, little, uh, just a little comparison here of tax revenue and spending. And if tax revenue is greater than spending, well, then it's a surplus. Um, and if it's the opposite, if tax revenue is less than spending, then it's a deficit. So then all you have to think about is what's going to happen to the people who are paying the taxes and the people who are receiving the injections or the spending from the government. Okay, so we can model that real quickly by looking over at the parts of the circular flow that matter in this case, which are just government spending G and uh, taxation T. So if the amount of revenue that a government receives is $500 billion, well, and then they spend back into the economy, uh, one trillion, so twice as much. Well, what's going to result from that is that, well, we're going to call that a deficit budget because the government is spending more than it's bringing in. Um, however, in this case, the effect on the circular flow is going to be to expand it. So if it's getting bigger, then we must be worried about a recession or a contraction which you remember, of course, are pretty much the same thing, all right? So what about the opposite of that? What if they spent less than what they brought in in government revenue? Okay, and we can just switch the numbers. We don't have to be fancy. So if they brought in one trillion in revenue, but then they only spent 500 billion, well, again, now the result would be that we no longer have a deficit, but surplus budget. We'll do surplus in green because it's, you know, positive and deficit is red. Um, anyway, and in this case, we're probably trying to in, uh, control inflation. Note, we're not saying that we're going to do the opposite. We're not trying to control an expansion. Um, again, the expansion we typically look at as being good. But remember, when we're expanding too quickly, it's typical that um, inflation is also going to occur. So, you know, you want to always phrase things so that you're talking about the actual problem that the government is, spent, uh, is concerned about. So in this case, we can say that, um, you know, the, um, the amount of leakage being bigger than the amount of the injection is going to have the effect of, um, you know, uh, bringing the circular flow down a little bit, shrinking it a little bit. And uh, again, this is just the basic strategy the government's always going to employ with fiscal policy. Okay, so how they accomplish this is a couple of ways. The first way that we'll look at is what are called the automatic stabilizers. And you have to remember that the people who make fiscal policy, um, you know, they are lawmakers, and they're going to take a long time to meet, they're going to take a long time to debate, and it might take some time for them actually to agree on a course for fiscal policy. So in the meantime, while they're doing that, it's good to have these uh, automatic stabilizers that they don't have to. Um, vote on or, or negotiate or anything like that. These things just happen. All right. There's basically three of them, and uh, we'll go through them real quickly. Okay. The first are uh, the progressive tax brackets that we already talked about. Um, so if it's a recession, we could expect that people's um, incomes are going to be falling. Um, obviously, there's more competition for labor. Um, people aren't going to be asking for raises because they're afraid of getting laid off in the first place. So anyhow, if incomes are falling, what's going to happen is that people aren't going to get into those upper uh, levels of the tax brackets. Therefore, where they maybe were going to pay, you know, a marginal rate of tax, um, marginal tax rate of, you know, 30 or 40 percent or something, now they're only going to pay marginal tax rates of 25 percent. Um, so again, it's not that the government is giving them money, but they're not taking as much money or, or having to pay as much money in tax as they would have had to. So again, that's appropriate because again, during a recession, we want to put more money into the hands of people to boost aggregate demand. 
at the same time, or I guess not at the same time, but um, during an inflation, again, the appropriate response would be to take a little bit of money out of the circular flow. Um, therefore, as people start to make more money uh, during an expansionary period, they're going to go up and up and up um, into the tax brackets and have to pay higher and higher and higher uh, rates, uh, marginal rates of tax. So if that's true, again, it's going to have some of that effect um, that, you know, th that the government's looking for. And again, they didn't have to do anything. It just happened. It's already something that's in place. Okay, the uh, second automatic stabilizer is personal savings, and they actually work the exact same way. Uh, when people's incomes are low, they're not going to save a very high rate of their money in the bank. Uh, they're going to spend most of it. We might talk about terms like disposable income, um, these uh, marginal propensities to save uh, numbers that we talked about last year. Um, anyway, so when people's incomes are down, they're not going to save much. So again, what that means is that proportionally more of their money is out in the economy and the effect on aggregate demand is not as severe as it could have been. Aggregate demand is still going to go down in both of these cases, but not as much as it would have. All right. Again, the same is going to happen with inflation as people begin to make more money. You can see that they'd start to save up for a rainy day or something like that. Okay, then the last one's going to be um, the social safety nets that already exist. And again, that's the point. These are automatic. Nobody had to vote about these. Well, not anymore. Um, so again, if people are, you know, going on, if they're losing their jobs, well, they're going to go on unemployment. Again, that means the government's going to be spending more money, putting more money back into the circular flow, and tax receipts are going to decline because people don't have income. Um, so again, that one is very much like what we already talked about just above. The idea with all three of these is that they are just that. They are stabilizers. They're not going to fix anything. Um, I always like to think about a... Uh, you know, a, a, an airfoil on the back of a car or whatever. Well, if you're driving like crazy, it's not going to keep you from crashing. But as you go faster and faster and faster, it does give your car a little bit more stability. But it's not the, situ uh, it's not the fix to the situation. It's just going to keep the situation from getting out of control so quickly. Okay. If the automatic stabilizers don't work, then um, the government's going to choose to initiate discretionary policy. And the key with discretionary policy is just that. The government is going to make a choice. They have to sit down and negotiate it. They have to decide to do it. Um, most commonly, what they'll do is to adjust the automatic stabilizers. So they might uh, change what the marginal tax rates are. So maybe you know bring them all down by 5% or something like that. Um, or bring them up by 5%, whatever. Um, then also they are likely to extend unemployment. That's, one, that's a very common thing to do during an a extended recession. A country, the U.S., for example, you can only be on unemployment for six months. And during the 2008-2009 uh, recession, they extended that to, I believe, up to like 18 months or something like that. So they extended it and then further extended it just to keep that money coming in. Okay, a second thing they might do under discretionary policy is just to run a surplus or, or a deficit budget in a very purposeful way. Um, again, you can see that these kind of are all uh, mixed together because it's not like they can just extend unemployment benefits without running a deficit budget. Obviously, that's going to cost a lot of money. Um, and then finally, you can see some sort of direct intervention. And this is likely to be something like uh, public works. So they're likely to, you know, go out and hire people specifically for the purpose of giving them money. And again, this is very much a, uh, a Keynesian tactic, um, stuff we've talked about a lot already. Okay? All right, that's basically the goal of fiscal policy and how they do it. Um, we'll work on diagramming it in class.